Oh, hey, shouldn't you knock before you enter someone's bedroom? Anyway, good morning. I was just stretching, you know. Seems like a beautiful day. Rohan, go buy things from the market. Not again. Can there be a better start to the day? How I wish technology was so developed that we would just buy things instantly. Ha, 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 your wish is my command. What is it you seek? Are you going or not? Uh, two liters of milk, uh, a pound of bread and uh, a block of ice cream. Oh, wow! That's two liters of milk, a pound of bread and a block of ice cream as well. I think I need to refrigerate this below minus two degrees. Well, anyway, how much do I pay you? I have zero money. Rohan, you forgot the money. Silly me. Hey, so as you can see, we have a positive number over here. We have zero and we have a negative number. Can you guess what we are going to study today? Not sure? Well, it's integers. I hope you remember what integers are. Mm. You don't seem confident. Don't worry, let's do a quick recap. So this, as we all know, is the number line. You know what? As a child, my dad used to tell me, you are a big zero. Optimistic as I am, I think he just meant I'm a neutral guy. So let me just stand at zero. Now, as you can see, to the right of zero, everything that we have is positive. We have one, two, three, four, five, and so on. These are called natural numbers or counting numbers. They are all positive. So now, if we just include zero to the set, the new set becomes the whole numbers. So whole numbers are nothing but zero and all positive numbers or all natural numbers. But now let us look at the left side of zero. You can see that there are negative numbers or negative integers like minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, it's never ending, it just goes on. And so these comprise negative integers. So combinedly, integers comprise the positive numbers, zero or neutral, and the negative numbers. Or we can also say that integers comprise whole numbers and their negative counterparts, except that of zero, because there can't be a negative or positive zero. Why? Because a number without magnitude cannot be assigned a sign. It's called neutral for a reason, you see. Now, can you tell me a real life example of a negative integer? Think about it. Let's think about the temperature below which we had to store the ice cream. What was it? Correct, it was minus two. You are a bright child. What's your age? 12, 13 maybe? See, that's a positive integer. And a real life example of zero in the words of my dad is me. Now, you must be aware that on the number line, numbers to the left are smaller than numbers to the right. So, two is smaller than five, zero is smaller than three, and minus four is smaller than zero. Conversely, we can also see that five is greater than two, three is greater than zero, and zero is greater than minus four. Well, wait a minute, how can zero be greater than something? Well, let's say I was at the supermarket buying the milk, the bread and the ice cream and the amount came up to be 250 rupees. And let's say I had exactly 250 rupees with me. What would the transaction be like? Seamless. I would give him 250 rupees, he would take it and he would not have to return any change from his counter. But let's say I did not have 250 rupees change and I had let's say a 500 rupee note. So what will happen? I'll give him 500, he will take 500 and he will return 250 back to me. So there will be a depreciation or look, you could say the change from his counter would get deducted by 250 rupees. So there you see, zero is greater than a negative number. Now coming back to the number line, I believe you remember when we add a positive integer to any number on the number line, we move to the right on the number line. And when we subtract a positive integer from a number on the number line, move to the left on the number line. Now, let's say we take an example. Let's say we add a positive integer 3 to another number 5. What do we get? We get 8. So let's visualize that on the number line. 
See, I'm standing on the hoverboard and this is the control to that. So right now, as you can see, I'm standing on five. And if I just add three, which means I move three steps to the right, I move three units. So see, now I'm standing at eight. But what if I want to subtract four? What then? I just do eight minus four. So four units to the left. So I just do that. Yeah. And finally, I land up at four. See, that was so simple, right? But what happens when we add a negative number or a negative integer? We move to the left. And when we subtract a negative integer, correct, we move to the right. So remember, adding a negative number is quite similar to subtracting a positive number because in both the scenarios, we move to the left. And subtracting a negative number is quite similar to adding a positive number because in both the scenarios, again, we move to the right. Mm, let's visualize that another way. So here we are sitting at a solitaire table and let's say I have a pack of cards. It just means that I have positive one pack of cards. And if I owed you a pack of cards, it would mean I have negative one pack of cards. So let's imagine that I have two pack of cards and you give me two negative packs. How many would I have now? <laughs> Adding a negative is same as subtracting a positive. So it means that you took away both my pack of cards. So two plus minus two is equal to zero. Hey, you're doing quite great. But now's the real test. Can you remember what's an additive inverse? <laughs> Come on, you've studied it before. <laughs> Can't remember? It's all right, I'll help you recall. An additive inverse is that number which when added to another number gives a zero. Think about it. A number which on summation with another number gives zero. Let's take five for instance. So what do we add to five to get a zero? Correct, it's minus five. So we say that minus five is the additive inverse of five. Now, let's just change positions of five and minus five. What do we have now? We have minus five plus five is again equal to zero. So here we say that five is the additive inverse of minus five. So if we take an integer a, we can write a plus additive inverse of a is equal to zero. And for two integers a and b, we have a minus b is equal to a plus additive inverse of b. Now let's just assign some values to a and b. Say a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 17. So a minus b is equal to 10 minus 17, that is minus 7. Now 10 minus 17 can also be written as 10 plus minus 17, which is of course equal to minus 7. So what do we mean by this? We just mean that 10 plus additive inverse of 17 is equal to minus 7. Now, if we have something like a minus minus b, it is actually equal to a minus additive inverse of b, which is nothing but a plus b. So 10 minus minus 17 is actually equal to 10 plus 17, which is 27. Whoa. That was a lot, right? I know. But now that you have understood the concepts, you can easily understand the operations and their rules, which we'll be discussing in the next video. So let's quickly summarize and I'll see you there. So in today's video, we learned all about integers. We saw that counting numbers are also called natural numbers. Whole numbers comprise zero and natural numbers. Integers comprise whole numbers and their negative counterparts except that of zero. Numbers on the number line which are to the left are smaller to those on the right. Adding a negative is the same as subtracting a positive. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. An additive inverse is that number which when add to another number gives zero.